They say every journey has to start somewhere. And for some of us, the best place to start is with one of these. Let's go. Welcome back everyone, my name is Steven Rodriguez, I'm your true champion, and today we are going to be talking about the brand new starter decks for the Digimon TCG. Now I love starter decks, and I'm on record for saying that they are one of the best ways to start playing the Digimon TCG, not only because they're a really simple and easy way to start playing the game, learning the rules and the flow of the game, but also because we have six starter decks now for every single major color, you can now get some good exposure to the different archetypes that exist within the Digimon TCG. Once you get that knowledge of the rules and the flow and the exposure to the different archetypes, you can now learn enough about the game to then move forward and build your own deck from scratch if you wish to. Now, that being said, not all starter decks are created equal. Some are more competitive out of the box than others, depending on their boss monsters, option cards, etc. And some have just overall better cards that could be really useful down the line once more support comes out. My goal in this video is not only to talk about the overall components of all these decks, what makes them competitive slash useful for the future, but also which one is best at doing both of those things. So that way, if you're someone who doesn't necessarily have a specific color they want to play and just wants to have the most overall well-rounded experience when it comes to getting into this game, you can make the most accurate and useful decision moving forward because sadly these are pretty scarce resource and it's not as easy as you think just to buy two of all of them and be good to go. You might need to get picky, might need to budget, and hopefully this video can help you make those tough decisions if you have to. Spoiler alert now, if you do have the means to get two of each of these starters, definitely do so. These are some of the most important ones ever created for the Digimon TCG. If you guys find anything in this video helpful or just enjoyable, because I do plan on talking a lot about how awesome these decks are, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, click that bell for notifications so you know when my videos go live for you. And if there's anything in this video you want me to elaborate on or just ask questions about, feel free to follow me over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash true champion Steven. I go live all the time and talk about this game nonstop. So come stop by, ask some questions live and in person, and hopefully we can have a nice little chat. Link is down below. With that being said, we have some starter decks to unbox, or should I say unwrap? <laughs> all right, guys, let's begin. All right, boys and girls, here we are at the tabletop setup. And like I said, I won't actually be doing an unboxing of the starter decks as uh, there, there be no boxes, but I will be doing a sort of deep dive into each one of these, talking about all the cards, what they kind of do, the overall themes. And then afterwards, we're gonna talk about which ones I think are best, not only uh, out of the box, but also moving forward for competitive viability. Full disclosure, by the way, the reason why I don't have actual starter deck boxes to unbox for you is when I got these decks from my pal Pete a few days ago, he asked me if I wanted to have them without packs or with packs. Uh, the without packs was cheaper and I was already getting singles anyway for BT4, so I figured why would I get packs? Uh, so here they are. I didn't think they'd have no boxes. I actually do like the actual opening of boxes for these videos, but hey, I made this bed, so I gotta lie in it. Regardless though, I am very excited. We have three beautiful decks to open, one for green, one for black, and one for purple. This allows us to round off all the colors. They now have their very own decks. And let me tell you, these ones are a cut above the rest uh, compared to the last ones we got for red, blue, and yellow. Starting off with the green one, let's take off this plastic sheath right here, remove these useless memory cards. My mat already has one, so we're chilling. Uh, but starting off as always, we have the eggs. Each deck comes with only four eggs, uh, and the green one is going to be Motimon. Uh, he has the Your Turn Inheritable effect to give your Digimon, if it's level six or higher, plus 1000 DP. Now, as you guys know, green is all about digivolving into big, strong, level six slash now level seven Digimon as fast as possible. And this guy gives those big boys plus 1000 DP. A uh, really useful card, probably one of the best eggs green has actually in general uh, for this game. Uh, moving on to the level threes, fun fact actually, all these ones have way more level threes than the older red, blue, and yellow decks, which is a super nice inclusion, if you ask me. Uh, starting off with the green one, we have four copies of Floramon. This is a Mushroomon clone, or a 4,000 DP vanilla that has a one cost to evolve. This is kind of useful for building your board, slash just overall having a nice beat stick if you want to hard play it. Not really the best for evolving though. Up next, we have four copies of Tentomon. This guy's actually really cool, uh, three costs to play, 2,000 DP with the on play effect to reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a green Digimon card, add it to your hand. Otherwise, put it to the bottom. 
This is effectively Green's Gabumon, and up until now, we haven't really had a card like this that can just add any Digimon card. It's always been like very specific, like Toga or Lilymon, uh, but now we just have a generic, hey look, a Digimon goes to your hand, really nice plus. Up next, we have four copies of Palmon. This card has the Inheritable. When attacking, if you attack an opponent's Digimon, this Digimon gets power plus 2,000 DP until the end of the turn. Uh, this again has synergy with the whole big dudes doing big attacks thing, but it also has synergy with the overall resting slash suspending strategy that green also has which this deck does use a lot and finally we have a new kind of vanilla for green a four cost 5,000 DP vanilla in Kunamon. Uh, you almost exclusively evolve into this guy. Uh, if you have to hard play him, that really sucks. But like I said, 16 rookies, that's actually a ton uh, in general, let alone for a starter deck. Really, really nice to see. Rookies are a super awesome resource for early filters slash just overall early board presence. Moving on to the level fours, we have four copies of Togimon. This is the exact same inheritable effect as the Palmon, except it's on level four. So that's pretty cool. If you uh, uh, stack both that's plus 4,000 DP when attacking an opponent's Digimon that's a big deal <laughs> that's a lot of DP uh, we have four copies of Kuwagamon a two cost to evolve 6,000 DP uh, vanilla it's basically a blocker without blocker so it's kind of bad uh, but hey it's better than nothing I guess and then we have the star of the show, not only for this deck, but just in general. We have two copies of Kabuterimon, a one cost to evolve, 5,000 DP level four that has blocker. This card is like one of the best reasons to buy this deck, but this is again another difference. Unlike the other red, blue, and yellow starter decks, you only get two of the blockers instead of four. And that's because these boys are one cost to evolve. Super, super useful. Uh, if you wanna get any of these starter decks, the reason why you get two of them is because you wanna max out on these blockers. They're so, so important. But that's it for the level fours. Uh, we only have 10 level fours comparatively to 16 level threes. Uh, that might be a bit obscured <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, if you do end up ever wanting to build like a more competitive version of just these starter decks, definitely mess around uh, with that lineup. I would go closer to like 14 slash 12 uh, for both of those. Moving on to the level fives, we have four copies of Okuamon. Uh, this is just a 7,000 DP vanilla for two costs to evolve. Pretty good, actually, uh, if you weren't playing green, because green actually has a bunch of really cheap evos at this level, but not in this deck. Next, we have four copies of Lilymon. This card's actually really cool. Uh, three costs to evolve, six to play normally, 7,000 DP, but has the win at Digivolving. Reveal the top five cards of your deck, add one level six or higher card from among them to your hand, and then place the remaining on the bottom. This does not specify color, so if you do end up playing like Chaosmon or Chaosmon Valderarm in green decks, you can play this card and actually search for them if you check them in the top five. Super useful, actually. And finally, we have two copies of Mega Kabuterimon to round off the level fives. Uh, this has the rare foiling, really cool, and it has the inheritable your turn once per turn. When this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon in battle and survives, you trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. Super awesome way to deal extra damage to your opponent while also controlling their board. Quick disclaimer here, by the way, this is not considered a security check. So if a card has a security effect, it does not actually activate because the card is being trashed. It is not being checked as security. Very, very important to keep that in mind. Finally, moving on to the last Digimon in this deck, we have two copies of Rosemon and two copies of Hercules Kabuterimon. Again, just like the old starter decks, they only give you four level sixes. This is a really, really low number of boss monsters, but hey, what are you going to do? Rosemon is 10 cost to play normally, 3 to evolve, 11,000 DP. With the win at Digivolving, one of your opponent's Digimon cannot attack or block until the end of the next turn. Really nice for sort of increasing aggression slash hindering aggression from your opponent. Uh, but the real star of the show for the level 6s is, is Hercules Kabu Terimon, the gorgeous uh, SR foiled card, and introduces a brand new mechanic into the game, actually. Uh, but first, he is a 12 cost to play normally, 4 cost to evolve, 12,000 DP monster with piercing, but he also has the main Digiburst 2 suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. Now, Digiburst, for those that don't know, is a really cool ability where you take sources from underneath your Digimon and discard them to the trash in order to activate said card's effect. So if you wanted to use this guy's effect, you take these two guys, put them in your trash, and now one of your opponent's dudes get rested, and hey, you can swing at it with piercing. Super cool. 
Cool piece of trivia, by the way, uh, the Digiverse mechanic was actually originally introduced in Japan via the starter decks and not set four because the starter decks actually came out before set four uh, over there, uh, unlike us, where it came out at the same time. I actually really like it when gaming companies like use starter decks as a way to kind of introduce us to new mechanics. Uh, we're going to see it happen again for Digimon when the Old Force and Galmon decks come out for the delay mechanic for option cards. But that's it for the Digimon. It's actually really cool to see like the overall synergy of this deck. You have your big boss beater that can rest dudes and swing at them and deal damage. You have ways to make them deal even more damage and you have ways to make them super buff and like attack over anything. So it just is a nice sort of beat down strategy that you see a lot in green actually because they are just about building powerful dudes and then using said dudes to win the game. Moving on to tamers and options, we have four copies of green Izzy Azumi. He's two costs to play normally. Your turn, when one of your opponent's Digimon becomes suspended, you may suspend this tamer to gain one memory. If this card said all turns, he would be actually broken. Because in theory, if your opponent just attacks, you could rest this guy to have them lose a memory, but sadly it doesn't work that way. The only way we have to actually proc this is by utilizing Hercules Kabuterimon's Digiburst or Needle Spray. Needle Spray, by the way, is a two cost option card that has the main effect suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. Very simple, similar to Flower Cannon, but it has a very different uh, security effect, which says activate this card's main effect and then add this card to your hand. Uh, so instead of Flower Cannon resting an entire board, this thing can only rest one thing, but it can rest blockers. So it's actually a super useful card for adding to your aggression. And finally, rounding off the entire green starter deck, we have two copies of Electroshocker. Five costs to play normally. Main, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to its owner's hand, and then trash all cards from underneath it. It's kind of like a cheaper terror cluster, but instead of going to the bottom of the deck, it goes to the opponent's hand, and it has no level restrictions. So this is actually a really fun way to remove threats like Valder Arm, Millenniumon, and then have that removal stick. Uh, security, activate this card's main effect. It's actually a pretty decent form of removal, uh, all things considered. So yeah, that's it for the entire green structure deck. One of the best ones, I think, uh, for the entire game. Moving on to the black one, let's go ahead and take this boy off. We have, of course, starting off our four Digi Eggs, four copies of Capurimon. Your turn. While this Digimon has blocker, it gets power plus 1000 DP. Black is all about having just big buff dudes, but instead of green using those dudes to like constantly attack and control your opponent's board, we just have them sit there and continue to sit there until we make them buffer slash give them really powerful inheritables to then use use them to kill their opponent. It's like a different form of beatdown, it's more resilient, and that's why it's really nice to have power gainers slash blockers, and this card supports both those things. Moving on to the level 3s, first things first, we have 4 copies of Jazamon, again a 4000 DP 2 drop vanilla clone, uh, but after that we have 4 copies of Agumon, 3 cost to play normally, 1000 DP, 0 memory cost, level 3, blocker. We have another level 3 blocker for black, uh, the other one's called Gatsumon from set 1, but this guy can actually attack and not lose you memory, which is super cool. Also, he's called Agumon, uh, which might be a big deal in the future if black ever gets some specific Agumon support. Speaking of Agumon support, we also have 4 copies of Toy Agumon, probably my favorite uh, level 3 in this deck. 2000 DP, 3 cost to play normally, 0 evolution cost, with the end of opponent's turn inheritable, I know, very weird. If your opponent did not attack with a Digimon this turn, trigger draw 1. So this is actually a draw card for black that is triggered when your opponent chooses not to attack. Which by the way guys, people like never attack in the Digimon TCG, so this proccing is actually really easy to do, whether or not you have blockers. And rounding off our 16 level 3s, again that's a lot, even for uh, actual competitive decks, we have Commandramon, 4 cost to play normally, 5000 DP, all the D Brigade fans out there knows who this guy is and uh, loves that he exists. Moving on to level 4s, we have 4 copies of Virus Greymon, he has the exact same inheritable as Toy Agumon, except he's a level 4. Up next we have Jazardmon, another 5 play cost, 6 as in DP vanilla, level 4, again it's worse than OG blockers, but hey, it's better than nothing. And finally, rounding off the entire level 4 package, we have 2 copies of Dark Tyranomon, the 1 drop blocker for black. This card is super cool, black has tons of support for blockers, and giving them another 1 drop evolution as well as a blocker is super cool. 
Moving on to level fives, we have four copies of Metal Greymont. And man, black is all about big metal Durgans, am I right? Uh, 7,000 DP, six cost to play normally, three cost to evolve, windage evolving until the end of your opponent's next turn, one of your Digimon gains blocker. So you can just give blocker to one of your dudes, uh, add to your defense, add to your board, super cool. You can choose itself, which is super cool. Uh, next, we have four copies of Metal Tyrannomon with a really weird art. <laughs> Really really weird, but hey better than nothing 9,000 DP three cost to evolve vanilla not bad and finally rounding off We have two copies of Mega Dramon 7,000 DP seven cost to play three cost to evolve with blocker as an inheritable That's right. We can give any level six. We want blocker if it doesn't already have it That's actually pretty decent especially if you just want to build up and stay built up with your walls Rounding off our Digimon, we have two copies of Machine Dramon and two copies of Black Blitz Greymon. So first things first, Machine Dramon, 10 cost to play, 3 cost to evolve, 11,000 DP, win Digivolving, up to two of your Digimon gain Reboot, which means instead of unsuspending during your active phase, they can do it during your opponent's active phase. Really, really cool, lets you be aggressive with your blockers and then get them back uh, for the actual defense during your opponent's turn. Then we have Blitz Greymon, 12,000 DP, 12 cost to play normally, four cost to evolve, he has security attack plus one, and main Digiburst two, one of your Digimon gets power plus 4,000 until the end of your opponent's turn. So like in the ideal world, you have this guy with this guy and then two more sources that you just try Crash to activate his Digiburst and then you give him plus 4,000 and now he's 16,000 DP during your opponent's turn. He has blocker, you block whatever you want, you restand, you slam for 12,000 plus one security, you live your best life. If you actually have this guy on board and this guy, you can give him reboot, he has reboot blocker, really, really nice combo, not only for defense, but also for offense. Like I said, black is yet again another beatdown deck, but instead of doing what green does, like turboing into it and doing it as fast as possible, this deck builds up slow, it builds its walls, it builds its defense, it has its dudes linger until it can do like a couple of big turns with big effects, big inheritables to win the game. Moving on to our tamers and options, we have four copies of Tai Kamiya, the black Tai, uh, two cost to play, opponent's turn. When you use blocker to suspend one of your Digimon, you may suspend this tamer to unsuspend one of your dudes. So basically, when you rest your Digimon to activate blocker, you can tap this to then restand said blocker or restand whatever you want during your opponent's turn. And if that thing has blocker, it can block again. So this is a really nice way to get multiple uses out of your blockers and just have your defense even more fortified. It's actually a really, really cool card and can pull off some pretty crazy plays. Moving on to our options, we have four copies of Laser Eye, four cost to play normally, main trigger D Digivolve up to two of your opponent's Digimon. So it's basically like two copies of Spider Shooter, but for four costs instead of six. And if you guys don't know, D Digivolve means that you take the top card of your opponent's Digivolve stack and you get rid of it to the trash. So uh, it doesn't actually like remove cards, it just weakens cards. So it's not the best to actually get rid of threats, but hey, it's better than nothing, I guess. And finally, rounding out the entire deck, we have two copies of Dark Side Attack. Speaking of actual ways to remove threats, we have this card. Play cost of five, main, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of seven or less. So, uh, for example, this thing can get rid of Mega Dramons, Metal Tyrannos, and Metal Grays. So every ultimate and below in these starters, it's actually a super useful tool for just getting rid of early threats, slash maybe clearing the funk out of your opponent's board before you use your bigger blockers to stop their bigger attacks. Really, really good card. Finally, some just hardcore black removal. Uh, really refreshing to see. Now that black and green are out the way, let's talk about purple. First things first, we have these useless memory cards. Get those out the way. And then we move on to our four eggs. This one's going to be Pagumon. Pagumon has the inheritable on deletion, trash the top two cards of your deck. So purple, for those that don't know, is a really like toolboxy, resource focused deck. And one of its biggest resources is the trash pile. So the more cards you get in there faster, the more access to different combos you have. And that's what this deck is all about. Moving on to level threes, we have four copies of Demi Devamon, another 4,000 DP to drop vanilla, but for all the Dan Devamon fans out there, it's another Devamon name that you can have in your trash. Up next, we have four copies of Gabumon, 
2000 DP 3 cost to play normally, 0 cost to evolve. When attacking, trigger draw 1, then trash 1 is its inheritable. So it's basically like a when attacking Demi Marimon effect, which is super nice not only for filtering your hand, but also building your trash. Up next, we have 4 copies of Drakemon. Uh, 3 cost to play normally, 2000 DP with the on play effect. You may return 1 purple option with a memory cost of 1 or 7 exactly from your trash to your hand. Uh, so the new era of purple cards are actually focused on abusing really powerful options and this is a really nice way to sort of recycle those once you use them slash once you mill them. Really good card actually, not just in this deck but in general. And finally rounding off the 16 level 3s. In this deck though, it's kind of nice to have a lot because you do recycle them on board, which is pretty cool. We have 4 copies of Elekmon, 4 costs to play normally, 0 costs to evolve, 5000 DP. This is a chonky boy. Moving on to level 4s, we have 4 copies of the Virus or Black Garurumon. He has the same inheritable as Gabumon, the level 3. Up next, we have 4 copies of, forgive me, Yukumon, Yokomon. <laughs> I'm so bad at these names. Uh, 5 costs to play normally, 2 costs to evolve, 6,000 DP. But again, it's just worse than regular blockers, but hey, it's better than nothing. And then finally, 2 copies of Devimon. Not only is it broken for being a 1 cost to evolve blocker, but it has Devimon in its name, which like I said earlier, is super important for all the Dan Devimon decks out there. Moving on to level 5s, we have 4 copies of Kyukimon. I think this card was actually called something else uh, in the Cyber Sleuth game, but I cannot remember what it was. Leave it down in the comments if you guys know. Uh, but after that, we have 4 copies of Skull Sedamon. Uh, this is, by the way, 9000 DP Vanilla. Don't know if I said that, but you can see that. Uh, uh, Skull Sedamon, though, has the win Digivolving effect to return one purple Digimon card from your trash to your hand. Again, just more recycle. This deck is all about not only managing its resources, but abusing its resources using things over and over and over again if it's really good for the particular matchup you're in and this card can let you do that uh, but rounding off the level fives we have two copies of black wear gururumon or just wear gururumon uh, your turn while there are five or more cards in your trash get plus 2000 dp this is actually a really awesome form of dp gain which is kind of nice to see in a purple deck because they're not really about big powerful dudes but having something to increase your dp is always nice and rounding off for Digimon, we have two copies of Venom Myotismon and two copies of Cress Ga. Rurumon, one of my favorite doggos in black is finally getting his purple debut. Uh, we'll talk about him in a second though. Starting off, we have Venom Myotismon, three costs to evolve, 10 costs to play, 11,000 DP. When digivolving, up to two of your Digimon gain retaliation until the end of your opponent's next turn. For those that don't know, retaliation means if this guy dies in battle, the attacker dies with him. It's effectively death touch. So this is a really nice way to when you have like rested dudes on your board that you attacked with that lived, evolve into this guy and give them retaliation so they won't be swung back at during your opponent's turn. Crest Guru Mon, 12,000 DP, 12 costs to play, 4 costs to evolve, again security attack plus 1, but it has the main Digi Burst 2 to play 1 purple level 3 card from your trash without paying its memory cost. Fun fact, you do actually get any on play effects, so if you get a card like Dracomon out of there, you can actually recycle option cards as well. Pretty cool. But that's it for the Digimon, let's talk about the options and tamers. We have 4 copies of Matt Ashida, purple Matt, uh, 2 costs to play normally. When one of your Digimon is deleted, you may suspend this tamer to gain 1 memory. Now there are some cards in purple that actually let you delete your own Digimon to activate effects. So this is actually a way to gain memory when you do that, uh, and a card that actually does that is Deathclaw here. We have 4 copies of that, 1 cost option. You may delete one of your Digimon to delete one of your opponents level 4 or lower. So let's say your opponent has a blocker on their board and you have like a lowly little uh, Gabu there. You play this for one, you kill this. If you have Matt, you can then rest it to go back to zero or one or whatever you're at. And now you can swing freely without the blocker being there. Super cool removal and combos nicely with the Matt directly. With that being said, I've literally saved the best for last. Rounding off the purple starter deck, we have two copies of Nailbone. This is a beautiful, beautiful option card that if you have no other reason than just getting four copies of this to buy two of these purple decks, uh, you should definitely do it because it's just that good. Uh, seven costs to play normally. Main, you may play one purple level three Digimon and one purple level four Digimon from your trash without paying its memory cost. 
but their on-play effects are negated, so it's different from Crest Gururumon. Also, security, you may play one purple level 4 or lower Digimon card from your trash without paying its memory cost, and then, of course, its on-play effects are negated. This card is not only good in this deck, or just good in general, but with cards like the purple Metal Gururumon promo that came in the dash packs for set 4, it can actually be abused over and over again for free. Really easy boards, really easy just attacks against your opponent. This card's just insane. Insane. But there you guys go. That'll go ahead and do it for the overall card by card of all these starter decks. Let's go ahead, hop back to the main screen, and talk about which one I think is best and why. All right, let's talk about which starter deck is best and why. First things first, I want to stress again that all of these starter decks are actually harder to get than I would like them to be, than anyone would like them to be, but hopefully in the future that will be different and you can find all of them for MSRP with booster packs inside, which is honestly amazing. And if you do have the means right now or in the future to pick up two of each of these, I highly recommend it. But the one you should get first, if it's easier for you to get than others, is the green starter deck. And unlike the red, blue, and yellow, it's not going to win by like some little hair of like, oh, hey, Gaia Force is a great card. No, no. This is objectively the best one of these uh, for a lot of reasons. The main ones being it has the best boss monster in Hercules Kabuterimon. This card actually got a card banned in the Japanese format with how good it was, but it also gives us really good inclusions like Tentomon, one drop blockers, which again is just more one drop evolutions for green and some generic support that in the future future with bigger beaters slash ways to abuse Palmons will just add to the overall toolbox ability of green. In fact, I would go as far as to say as if you just picked up two of these green starters, you could actually build a competitive deck for the current format that can actually get consistent wins. But I want to stress really quick that I'm not saying the black and purple decks suck. I'm just saying compared to the green one out of the box and in general, they are just so much worse. But I will say that the purple one is obviously second place because things like Drakemon and Nailbone are such game changers for the purple strategy. They're just not nearly as good out of the box unless you have a lot of specific cards right now. Herc technically is good all by himself. He's just a little slow, but if you play it right and just kind of like wait for your moment to strike against your opponent, it can create a ton of advantage and pressure. And I think having a really comprehensive and powerful strategy like that is something every starter should strive for. In the future, when we get like Old Force and Gallant, that will be a very similar case for each of those as well. And boom, there you guys go. That is it for my overall analysis of the green, purple, and black starter decks for the Digimon TCG. If you guys did enjoy, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, click that bell with notifications so you know when my videos go live for you. And if there's anything in this video you want to talk with me more about, feel free to follow me over on Twitch. Link is down below. I go live all the time and talk about this game nonstop. So come stop by, ask some questions, and we can hopefully have a nice little chat. But with all that out of the way, I have been your true champion, Steven. Please be sure to work hard, rest easy, and live well. And I will see you all next time. Peace.